All right. I love this book. I'm so glad we're getting to read this. And if you haven't heard the other chapters, you can go to Law of Life for Children and listen to the rest of them. Or you can get Nicole Parker's books and read them yourself. I love them. So right now we're reading Faith Roots and we're in chapter five today. I am so excited. And the illustrations are by a Adele of Arubido Torres. And I'm so thankful that Nicole Parker has given us permission to read her wonderful books. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the stories in the Bible of people who went through difficult things just like we have to. So we can be encouraged instead of being afraid. So send your spirit to teach us and help us to grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So I put some of the Bible verses that go along with the, um, the Israelites being delivered from Egypt into song. And then so that you can hopefully learn them in an easier way. So let me see if I can do this right. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not their own. And they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. Genesis 15, 13, and 14, they shall come out with great substance. You know, I love this promise because God told Abraham, your, your descendants are going to be slaves for 400 years. But when they come out, I'm going to give them lots of stuff. Slaves don't have anything, but God knows how to turn our problems into blessings. So do you have a testimony of how God's blessed you this week? Um, I, I have one. Okay. Faith travels. Okay, go ahead. Safe travels. Safe travels. That's so important. That's a huge testimony that God's kept you safe when you're traveling. Thank you so much for sharing. Does anyone else want to share a testimony of how God's helped you or blessed you in any way? He, he, I was sick and he helped me feel better. Oh, that's awesome. So you were sick and God helped you feel better. I love that. Yes. He helped me yesterday. I went, I got to go to the park with my mom because I'm visiting her. And we got to meet a girl named Morgan. She's lost a lot of friends and I got to pray with her and encourage her. So please pray for Morgan. I was so excited to be able to pray with her because we all hurt sometimes, right? So that's my testimony. So keep thinking about testimonies because at the end I'll have opportunity for you to share more too. So who would like to read? Oh, did somebody else want to say something? Nope. Okay. Who would like to read the memory verse? It's on the screen. I will. Okay. And the Lord said, I have surely seen an, what is it? Application. Affliction. Yeah, it's a really big word. Affliction. Of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I, and I have come down to deliver them out of the land of the Egyptians. And bring them up out of that island unto a good land. And a large, and a large unto a flowering. Wait, what? A land oh. flowing, flowing, yeah, flowing with milk and honey. Exodus three, um, verse seven, and eight. Very good. Seven. Thank you so much. You did a good job reading that long verse. I really like it because if we go back, it says. 
that he's surely heard their affliction. Do you know what affliction is? No. Okay. That's a kind of an old word. But affliction means when you get sick or you got beat up or you've been attacked or you're going through all kinds of trouble. The affliction is all kinds of troubles that, that are not fun. So he said, I've heard about all your troubles, which you're, you're going through in Egypt. That's where they were enslaved by reason of your taskmasters. A taskmaster is somebody who makes you do things you don't want to do. Uh, you know, you have no freedom because you're a slave. And I've heard your sorrows. You know, they were sad. And I've come to deliver you out of the hand of the Egyptians. Those are the ones who had them enslaved, right? God loves Egyptians too. It's just those were the people who had them enslaved. And I'm going to bring you up to a good land, to a large land, flowing with milk and honey. Now, that was their way of saying, you know, a place with lots of good food and everything you need. So they talked a little different than we do. But isn't that nice that God promised to set them free? Yeah. So what did Joseph do to encourage others to believe God's promises? Let's look it up. It's in Hebrews 11.22. This will go along with our story today. It's just one verse. Hebrews 11.22. Hebrews in is in the New Testament towards the end. So if you go to the end of your Bible and then go backwards, you'll probably find it quicker. It's um, Hebrews, James, and then John. And I mean, Hebrews, James. Yeah, Peter and John and then Revelation. So Hebrews 11, verse 22. Does anybody want to read that for me? Hello. Okay. What did Joseph... No, honey, no, that's not... No, we don't have our Bible right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's in the Bible. Very good. It's okay. Hebrews 11, verse 22. We don't have our Bible right now. Oh, you don't have your Bible. Okay. That's no, no problem. I can do it. Oh, thank you. Just a moment. Hebrews. Eleven. Twenty-two. It says, By faith, Joseph, when he, he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. Okay, so when he was dying, he was encouraging the Israelites that they were going to get out of Egypt, right? So he said something about his bones. So let's find out exactly what that means. So let's go to Genesis 50, 24 and 25, and we'll see how... Moses used, I mean, Joseph used his bones to encourage somebody. That's a little weird. I don't think I've used my bones to encourage somebody. Genesis 50, 24 and 25. Would you like to read that again? or? Sure. Just a moment. Genesis 50. Um, 24 and 25. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land of which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath with, from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry me, carry up my bones from here wow so joseph said keep my bones keep them ready so when god delivers you you can take me out too that's how he oh. used his bones to encourage somebody that's very creative <laughs> don't you think yeah he had a lot of faith so this is a song god gave me a few years ago and this is based on psalms 37 i encourage you to read that chapter in psalms i love it it's so encouraging especially when you're going through things that are not fair and it's not fun and you get all upset it will calm you down do not fret and get yourself upset 
Do not fret about evil men who do all kinds of evil, wicked things. Do not get upset about them, for they will soon be cut off like the grass. Yes, they will cease to exist. And though you carefully look for them, they will not be found. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Rest in him and do good always. And you will dwell in the land for sure and feed on God's faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord your God. Praise him with all of your heart. And he will give you your secret desires as you delight in him. Come at your way unto the Lord. Trust in him and he'll bring it to pass. He will make his righteousness shine, his justice as the noonday. Be still and patiently wait for your God. Forsake the wrath in your heart. For anger only leads to evil and will do you no good. Do not fret and get yourself upset. Do not fret about evil men. For they will be cut off like the grass. Yes, they will not be found. Wait on your God and inherit the earth. Abundance of peace will be yours. And you shall have everlasting joy, for God has promised it. Yes, you shall have everlasting joy, for God has promised it. That's based on Psalm 37, 1 through 11, and Isaiah 35, 10. I am so glad we can have hope in Jesus. So now let's read chapter 5 in Faith Roots, Joseph Bones. Or I guess it's called Joseph's Tomb, and I said Joseph's Bones, but anyway, it's similar. So, did you hear him, Papa? Did you hear Moses? There a squeal as Dad's large frame filled the doorway of their little mud brick house. I could hardly miss it standing right by his elbow, could I? Papa chuckled, sweeping Zara up into his bronzed arms and kissing Mama on the forehead. Yes, I heard all you heard and more. And I'm excited too, he assured her, beaming. What else did he say, Mama asked, leaning over to scoop the basket she was weaving out of the way. Here, sit down beside me, she said to Papa, patting a spot on the mat. I admit my heart is beating faster tonight, she smiled at Papa. Just to think, we will be leaving soon for Canaan. I wonder if I should start harvesting my garden early. When will we know? Papa seated himself on the mat and motioned for Asher to join him. It's hard to tell. I wouldn't start early harvesting quite yet. Moses believes the miracles, miraculous signs will persuade Pharaoh to let us go, but he didn't exactly say when. Papa paused. He said we must just trust Yahweh. But I can't help thinking, he smiled, that this must be a direct answer to prayers. We have been praying in the prayer meeting Caleb and I have organized these last few months, asking Yahweh to deliver us. What are you going to do, Papa? asked Asher. Should we start packing now? I love your faith, son. Papa grinned and began gathering the dried bulrushes, bulrush leaves in Mama's pile and organizing them in a stack, all going in the same direction. But I, sus I suspect it will take a little time to persuade Pharaoh. I'm planning to continue working, as Moses said to. He added, but I will have an extra spring in my step tomorrow. I don't know whether I dare mention anything to Madam Shawnee tomorrow at work, Mama said. My heart will be boiling over with a secret, though. I'm sure the news of Moses' arrival will make it to the Egyptians very quickly, Papa answered, but it's probably best not to mention it until she asks. Moses talked about Joseph's bones, Asher pondered aloud. Where is Joseph buried anyway? Before we talk about that, add some water to this bowl for soaking the leaves. 
Papa instruction, motioning for Asher to bring the heavy water amphora from the doorway. Sarah, can you start picking out the longest, widest leaves for Mama from my pile? Papa patted Sarah's bouncing curls. And how was your day today, my girl? Papa, the tomb, Asher begged. Where's Joseph's tomb? Papa laughed. Patience, my son, he admonished. Joseph's bones have been buried a long time. And the secret can keep for two more minutes. I want to know how your sister's day went. Asher sighed. Why do adults always want us to learn to wait? He wondered in exasperation. Sarah snuggled her head against Papa's knee. Then propped herself up again and began sorting the leaves into different piles. The twins were so funny today. They are learning to talk, and sometimes they are very naughty, she giggled. Rashid is a little bigger than Camila, and he keeps pushing her around. Today, when he pushed her, she stomped on his foot and made him cry. I felt sorry for him, but really, he deserved it. Too bad for him, Papa Turtle. Those who rule by power will suffer under others' power as well. Always use your power to serve, not to abuse those weaker than you. If only the Egyptians could all learn that, Asher grumbled, pouring more water into the bowl of soaking leaves, then settling the water pitcher back into its place by the door. I hate their power over us. I can't wait until we can get back at them. He squatted again beside Papa. Papa reached over and gently tucked his finger under Asher's chin, pulling his face up so their brown eyes met. Asher, the use of power to hurt others in revenge is a terrible thing. It is directly opposed to everything that is in the character of Yahweh. We must trust Yahweh to bring justice. Those who long to punish evildoers and vengeance become like their abusers. Their character is molded into the image of the enemy instead of the image of Yahweh. Asher bit his lip. It doesn't seem like Yahweh's ever going to give us justice, though. You work as a slave, and so do Mama and I. Zara will soon, and all our friends are slaves, too. Our people have been in slaves for hundreds of years. If justice matters to Yahweh, why doesn't he do something about it? It is not the power to master, but the power to serve that reveals true greatness, Mama spoke up gently. Her hands flying as she wove bulrushes, bulrush leaves tightly into her basket. Remember what happened to Moses and why he vanished for the past 40 years. He sought to write injustice in the wrong way by killing an Egyptian who was beating a Hebrew slave. Moses fought heartless power with the same heartless power in response. His actions proved that there was much he needed to learn about how to patiently wait in faith for Yahweh to write injustice. Now, to answer your question about Joseph's bones, Papa said, it is not far away. It's right here in the land of Goshen. Joseph did not want it to become a shrine where people might be tempted to worship. He understand the heavy focus on death in the Egyptian religion. They believe elaborate treatment of dead people's bodies is necessary for afterlife. I think he feared we might be tempted to worship the dead as well. Joseph did not want anyone to focus on worshiping his body or his tomb. He wanted our people to focus on Yahweh and his promise of our return to Canaan. So he made his burial place very simple. I'd like to go there sometime, Asher said. The promise of going back to Canaan sounds almost too good to be true, but it's exciting to think 
that we get to see that promise fulfilled. It is indeed, Papa beamed. We need to get to sleep now to prepare for a long day tomorrow. But since we're already talking about Joseph tomorrow night, I want to tell you about an even greater miracle than our deliverance from Egyptian slavery. A miracle Yahweh did for Joseph. So we'll have to wait till next time to learn that story. But that's the end of the chapter. I think that's a cool chapter. So let's go to the questions. So think about it. Would you have been excited or scared about leaving Egypt to go to Canaan if you had been a slave in their time? I would have been probably scared. I think I would have had both. I'd have been scared and excited and I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, that that is a little scary to go somewhere different, huh? Definitely. Anybody else? Yeah, that's something to think about. When we know God is leading us to do something, do we need to be afraid? No. No, we don't. And I love this verse, Joshua 1, verse 9. Does anybody want to look that up for me? Joshua 1, 9. If not, I will. Anybody want to read that for me? Joshua 1, 9. Okay, I will. Joshua. Joshua. One. Nine. Okay. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor... Be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Ooh, I like that promise. Do you guys like that promise? Mm. I don't want to be afraid, and I'm glad God's with us wherever we go. We can be courageous and strong because he's with us. I love it. What about this? Those who rule by power will suffer under others' power as well. Mm, something to think about. So what happens to our relationships when we try to force others to do what we want? Doesn't turn out very well. It doesn't turn out very well at all, does it? What's no. a better way to do something? Um, do you... Do what others want to do, like be nice and uh, I don't know. That's yeah, all. Good. Yes, do to others what they would want. The Bible says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So treat others the way you would want to be treated, right? And the way that happens is if we go to God to get everything we need, then we can give that to others, right? So to treat others the way we would want to be treated is works a ton better. It is not the power to master, but the power to serve that reveals true greatness. And master is another word of saying to be in control, to be the boss, to make people behave, right? It's not the power to be in control and force people, but it's the power to serve and help people and treat them kindly that reveals true greatness. Mm, that's something to think about, isn't it? So what reaches your heart? Force or love? Love. Love, that's true. Very good. It's so much better to help people, right? And to love instead of force. Force always causes all kinds of trouble. So do you want to reach others with God's love by serving them instead of trying to control them? Yes. Yes, me too. Remember, the only way we can do that is we go to God to get everything we need, and then we can give it to others. 
So does anybody have a testimony? Anything that God's done for you or encouraged you, anything big or little, doesn't matter. I have a testimony. All right. Um, so the job I have right now, um, I, I'm trying to think how to explain it, but when I, how I found the place for, to work, um, I was looking for my dentist and then I bumped into this other place and I looked in it and I was like, Hey, that looks interesting. I might join it. So then I joined it and they asked what position and I just kind of was like, Oh, this one's close to, uh, I didn't want it late at night. I didn't want it on the weekends and I wanted it kind of close to home and it was perfect. Uh, it was a Monday through Thursday, four to eight. And so then um, I started working and my coworkers were like, that's weird. It's usually a Monday through Friday. I don't know why they changed it to a Monday through Thursday. And I was like, I wouldn't have worked. I mean, I didn't say it to them, but it was like, I wouldn't have worked then. Um, but then they've changed my job again. Now I work later, but it was supposed to be a Monday through Friday, four to 11. And I said, I don't work Friday nights. And they said, okay, we will indefinitely have Fridays off. Um, oh, as long as you have a job, you have Fridays off. And then also the people I'm working with Gosh. and around, um, I'm realizing they need Jesus. I mean, everyone needs Jesus, mm. but so yeah. God placed me in this job, um, and I'm excited. That's wonderful. Praise God. All right. Now let's pray to him. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for working in our lives. Thank you for caring. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you, Lord, that you don't force us, that you love us, and you offer us to follow you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. All right, and I'm going to turn off the record.